This is The Sin Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop, where you are the real star of today's show. And if you're here watching, you're part of the pit crew. So thank you for being here. Thank you for making talking about the news such a fun event each and every day. So we do have a bit of sim racing news, and we have a bit of just general computer slash gaming news, things that might affect us going down the line. And I think we're seeing a little more, unfortunately, a little too much of that in the recent future uh, with various threats and things going on in our computer world. But let's talk and start off with the sim racing news. And uh, you've seen me practicing, and I'm going to bring up a graphic here. But uh, coming up this weekend, I'm just going to give you guys a reminder, is the roar before the 24, the 2.4-hour race at iRacing, pitting the Kia Optima against the Ford Mustang against the Mazda Miata. And I'm going to be running the in the Mustang, I've been doing a lot of practicing for that event, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm a big fan of endurance racing. It's a completely different test of our abilities. So that is this weekend. I'm probably not going to promote it any more than just uh, practicing for it and actually being in the event. It looks like I'm going to run the Saturday 1700 GMT race is the time slot that I'm going to be looking for. You notice that, Mikhail? I, I, I slowed it down just a little bit to see if I could get it out of my mouth clean for once. Um, don't know if you guys saw it or not, but we've been doing some streams of Mitchie being my crew chief and spotter. And we've been that's his setup when he's at home watching me race, talking to you guys, doing the stream, and trying to figure out what we can get out of my setup and out of me as a driver. So uh, it's been a very fun build up for me leading up to this race. So I'm a little off topic getting into personal stuff more than sim racing news because you know about it. Other thing, we talked about the iRacing Red Bull GRC livery contest that was going on. And here's a little post here by Red Bull GRC guys talking about, you know, one of those uh, meme type things when you can't decide on which one of your liveries to use. So they are analyzing the cars and trying to make a decision as to which livery sent in by us the sim racers will be the the winning livery for that contest and kind of funny red bull seems just has their hands in just about every painting competition because there was also a red bull racing photo mode competition for 2017 and this is the winning photo and that's a great looking photo obviously you see both red bull cars on the elevation change at monaco so if you know monaco that's coming down the hill on the left making the big, it's more than a 180 degree turn. Uh, I believe it's all the casino section, if I'm not mistaken. Someone else can c correct me on that. But I believe that turn is right at the casino. And then this makes a right and then goes into the tunnel, if you know your uh, Monaco. So anyway, uh, Red Bull got their hands in every type of competition there is right now, whether it's painting or photo mode, uh, and certainly prize events as well. They're all over the world of eSport right now. Uh, that is for sure. Um, that photo doesn't do it for you, Steam. Uh, all right, if I'm going to be super critical, I think it's a cool angle and a cool shot. It's a little washed out. Oh, the hotel. Thank you, John. Not the casino. It's the hotel. Um, Cosmic, welcome. Glad you finally made it to the live show. We have a lot of fun talking about things, and, you know, you can give me your opinion. You think this is a quality photo? You think this is a Red Bull, G Red Bull photo competition, a winning picture i'd like to see the others i didn't go through them all but i want to give congratulations let's see jake is the winner here they just gave his first name so jake something is the winner with this awesome shot next up on the news coming from thrustmaster and this is an interesting one but this is the new tspc racer 488 ferrari edition and sort of an interesting uh upgrade i suppose i guess if you had a tspc and you were jealous of the TGT and some of its other features. But notice it's only got two radial dials. It does have the rev strip. It does have a suede or Alcantara covered wheel. We can probably get more on that and find out if it's actually suede or Alcantara. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, da, 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 da. Reading along, reading along. I can't see it because I'm not, I'm trying to read too much. I'm trying to scan it. Uh, but there is a press release that's coming out fairly immediately in February, they're saying, and it will be six ninety nine ninety nine. and I'm assuming like the other TSPC, no pedals included. So that's a wheelbase and a wheel rim. What, <coughs> what, uh, 
What fascinates me about this is here is yet another combination on... I mean, I love the TS base. It's a great base. And they have so many different wheels available, whether you're buying them separately or whether you're buying them uh, as a full kit like this one is. Uh, little things I take issue with, though. I mean, they have all the buttons are labeled for whatever the 488 had, but I don't have a drink. I don't have wash. Um, so a lot of the, the labeling is just sort of for the real-life version, not necessarily for sim racing. Hey, Greg. Hey, everyone. I agree with you there. Hey, hey, everybody. Pleather is fake leather. Yes. I, th I think Al I would say that Alcantara is typically one step higher than pleather. Alcantara to suede is one step higher than pleather to fake leather in most cases. Because a lot of pleather is just vinyl. Uh, <laughs> at least the pleather that I've gotten. Um, anyway, what my point is, and congratulations to Thrustmaster on a great looking wheel. And I am not trying to take away from the wheel. But man, wheel after wheel after wheel after wheel... Where are the pedals, Thrustmaster? Yep, I'm going to be kind of a jerk about it. Where are the pedals, Thrustmaster? Come on. So that's how I'm, I'm going to leave that topic. Moving on. This is uh, uh, something... Now, this i, I got to give some thank yous. Um, Eric Olson, Sebastian uh, Roca, Alexander ARB, Tom, Tim, and the man all sent me stories today. So many emails from you guys with great topics for talking about on today's sim... Uh, Pit, pit stop. So thank you very much for sending those in. You guys have absolutely elevated your status in the pit crew, and I thank you for that. But this is a new company, and they build what it's called uh, Whirlwind FX, and they build what they call a world's first 4D environmental simulator. It specializes in like wind, fire, smoke, clouds, things like this, certain types of, of movements or animations within. And when you think about the way a sim is built, it's actually a bunch of different modules all working together. And some of it, when you think of a, a racing sim, sure, granted, the physics model is, is all done by them in-house. But certain other aspects, weather, visual lighting, uh, dimensional aspects, modeling, all of that, or not all, a lot of that is third-party stuff. So I think of our sims and how this relates to us, and we've been asking for things like rain, running water, uh, better smoke off the tires, things like that. And it could be a company, and I'm not saying World Wind FX is getting themselves in line to help the sim racing market out in particular, but it could be a factor in the future as these parts are interchangeable. I mean, if you have great fire modeling, you can go from sim to sim to sim. I mean, maybe it's just a tiny part, but maybe the, the, the backfires out of the exhaust pipes can be more brilliant. So... That's why I bring it up and just something to kind of think about the future and how our sims partially are done by the sim companies themselves and partially by outside third-party companies. So, another story tent sent in, and I'm still working on getting my website up to date, and I do promise you that I will get the website update, and in the future, all of the links to all the sh uh, topics will be at the simpit.com with the appropriate pit stop uh, episode, but... This is, the website is actrackrebootproject.wixsite.com, W-I-X-S-I-T-E.com, and they're calling it the Reboot Project, and the aim of this project is to utilize a bunch of uh, abandoned or unfinished tracks and bring them back to life for Assetto Corsa. So when I went there, I was actually pretty impressed. I have not downloaded and driven any. I cannot testify to the quality of of any of these tracks. I can tell you the images that they picked. Is that Imola? Yeah, 72 Imola. Um, and we might have already seen some of these tracks at other places. This might be a little bit of regurgitation. I don't know, and I'm not even vouching for their authenticity or the validity of their uh, tracks, but if you're just looking for something to do on a Seto Corsa, and maybe some of these tracks are ones that you haven't had a chance to drive at and are always dying to, you might want to get in there and, and check that out as well. A lot of news starting to come out of CES, Consumer Electronics Show, in Las Vegas that's going on right now. And we talked a little bit about certain things, one of them being the Vive. But there was an article that is a little bit worth reading or checking out, and that's with UploadVR.com. And they basically were able to test out the new high-resolution Vive 
on a CXE simulation, it's funny enough. So you look down, here's CXE simulations. That is not at the trade show, I don't think. Actually, it could be. That looks like Vive Protective Mask, so it might be. Um, but they got to talk about the effects of a 2880 by 1600 version of Vive, and they talked about the additional clarity. They also talked about not having your eyes see those rings. Like, one of the things when I run in, in VR is every once in a while your eye will kind of get hung up on seeing one of the ridges of the lenses. And they said that that was minimized quite a bit in this version. So, reading this article, which is at UploadVR.com, uh, it, it gives you a little sense that the next gen, which, hey, we're seeing physical models. So, there's one good enough for them to take a bunch of them in boxes over to a trade show. And to me, that would mean that they're at a pre-production level, not a prototype level, if that makes sense to you guys. I wouldn't show up to a trade show with a handful of uh, prototypes and let the general public talk about it. Um, yeah, that'll be one of the concerns as they get bigger and bigger resolution. Well, my monitors, as they get bigger, get more expensive. Uh, yeah, more expensive and heavier. Um... So that will certainly be a factor. Um, but we saw, like, the wireless unit they were doing. Here's an image of it. That could reduce some of the weight. The wire has a little weight on the unit, and then also the, the weight of it pulling down the wire itself. So that would be removed. Uh, but we can hope for better days in VR. If you, if you love VR, it's just going to get better. And if you've been on the fence about VR, it's going to come into your wheelhouse. And if you're against VR, there's probably nothing we can do to change your mind. <laughs> uh, another story. This comes in this. I, I don't know anything about it. It was sent in to me, and I thought, that is a really clever idea. So I'm showing it to you guys for two reasons. One, maybe it fits your needs and you can check it out. Two, I'm going to try to contact them so I can check it out. And three, this might be a great design idea for certain DIY people, depending on what they're trying to build their rig around. But... This is a wheel stand, so you think, wow, that's a funny-looking seat. It's actually a wheel stand, so you get down here and you see it, and what it does is it hooks the wheels of the chair so it's not going to slide away. That's awesome. I've done my own DIY versions of that to various different wheel stands or desks that I've used a rolling desk chair with. Number two, you can adjust where the shifter mounts and where the wheel and pedals mount all independently, in addition to that, you can actually change the angle of the, the pedals. Looks like you can change the angle of the wheel deck. My experience is these black twisty knobs for adjustment. Sometimes on, I'm like looking at, here, let's look at this picture. I wish I could zoom in. Uh, oh, I, it's hard to see, but if you see this knob right here in the center, oh, you guys can't see where I'm pointing. On that pivot point for the wheel deck, that's one area of concern for me that would take this and eliminate it from being a serious rig without trying it. Now, I need to try it because I could eat my words and I will happily do so. But I do bring this up and show it to you because a lot of people still race at their desk. And maybe there's something you can do or something you can incorporate from this design that might work for you at home. Or maybe this is the perfect solution for your racing needs. So check them out. This is at massdrop.com. And I see a bunch. So this is like maybe one of those like Alibaba type sites where you can buy just about anything in the world. Um, this is the Arosi Velocita Racing Simulator. You like that butchering of a name? Arosi Velocita. 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 Next up. This is an article at GameDebate.com, and just yesterday we talked about the fixes going on with chipsets and NVIDIA making that big chip change update uh, to get around the Meltdown and Spectre fixes, and these are chipset targeted viruses or, or uh, intrusions into your computer. This article goes on to tell you that Windows is doing things, and they're already giving you an idea of what kind of an impact it's going to have on your computer, and... You know, if you're using an older chipset, like in this this quote right here, if you're using a Windows 10 and you've got a CPU from CPU from 2015 or earlier, so they call it a Haswell or older. That's above my 
knowledge of chipsets. Uh, the slowdowns are significant, and they will notice a, a noticeable decrease in system performance. So this, yesterday, when somebody was saying, why do you talk about this? It has nothing to do with sim racing. No, directly it doesn't, but indirectly, you know, this computer's brand new. That one is probably right about 2015. And if all of a sudden I I, I, I have a massive problem or, or a decrease in performance, that's going to be a big, big problem for me. Yeah, and NVIDIA does it, but they didn't release anything letting you know the performance impact. But I can only imagine we're going to see some performance impact across the board as... Our operating systems and our chipset companies all make moves to correct and fix the problem. Um, and it might be affected by the age of your computer. It might be affected by whether you're on Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, NVIDIA, AMD. They're all going to have independent threats, and they'll probably all have common threats. So in the next, you know, coming six months, a year, I think we're going to really start to get an idea of what kind of impact this really does have. Um, Greg, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a drop in Intel chip prices if the new AMD chip is, uh, their Generation 2 Ryzen chip, I think it's called. Uh, uh, if that one is really performing, then it might just help out, uh, Intel pricing. They might have to do something to counter. I mean, when you have a good rivalry between the two companies, an honest-to-goodness rivalry, you get price competition and for a long time amd has just kind of been out of it in my opinion and intel's been able to just raise their prices without having strong competition for what we do so uh this article again is at gamedebate.com and if this is something a lot of you guys are just computer guys not just sim racers but a lot of you guys a lot of us are computer guys and this is very important to our you know, personal businesses, perhaps, perhaps our jobs outside life and certainly can affect our sim racing and even small things. I mean, a performance change could make a computer that had worked for just something as simple as streaming or playing basic gaming. Uh, all of a sudden that could be slowed down and that would, that would really suck. We pay a lot of money for our computers and I get back to the enforcement side. Hey, that sucks. If I spend two grand on a computer and some virus maker can rob me of performance well i'm mad about that i'm mad as hell about that so anyway moving on gt planet has a story about race marshall program returning to forza motorsport 7 in forza 6 it was in there in forza 7 it wasn't forza you get some good driving you get some bad driving and now they are going to have a race marshall program that actually notifies uh microsoft turn 10 about people doing certain behavior and you might even end up with an email from turn 10 saying you've been banned or you're gonna need to watch your ass so um it's good to see we talk often about various levels of enforcement in sim racing i think this is more against the guy going backwards than the guy who can't get into turn one well but it'll be i don't know personally how strict their automated marshalling system is so maybe one of you guys know and has better experience with that and you can give us an idea and let us know if that's good that they're implementing it into forza 7 or is it something they should have just stayed away from and maybe there's a reason it wasn't put into uh the game spatial's mad as hell as well Next up, NASCAR and esports. Why t the time is now? We just mentioned this yesterday. NASCAR with heat and with eye racing, looking into the esport world. And here's just another article. And, and again, what's the point of the, the pit stop? It's to talk sim racing news. And it's also so that we're the ones who are really thinking about tomorrow, today. And they're being pushed. So not only is it going on from their end, but when you have articles coming out saying, hey, where are they? Why are they not doing it yet? Get in and do this. Here's another article. We're going to see an explosion in esports, and it's going to happen in so many different ways. So many ways. You know, from the esport world, from the professional motorsport world, from us, the sim racing community world, from Visa. It's going to be huge. It's getting huge. It's already huge. <clears throat> Here's an article, and I'm not going to go into great detail about this. Um... 
This is at medium.com. And this is an article talking about does racing need esports, and they go into a whole bunch of different tangents. This is really worth uh, reading, so go to Medium and, t and check it out. But they bring up a lot of different thoughts. So just the other day, I was talking about esport, and I say, "Oh, who's going to control things in the end?" And this article talks about some of the greatest drivers, like even Senna, having rivalries in their younger careers. Guys that they would say have the same talent or even better talent than them, but for whatever reason. They never made, broke through the glass ceiling, ceiling of racing and got that sponsorship dollars. So the greatest. That's one angle on the driver's side, and eSport totally breaks that glass ceiling open. The other thing about eSport, you think about, and this is what I've been talking about, eSport growth and who's going to control it. Right now in America, small tracks like Irwindale are closing every day. Now, you can't say Irwindale built American racing because it's actually a pretty new track to be closing already. But when you think about it, nationwide, small tracks, tracks that were the pillar of growing grassroots racing are closing down. This is what this guy, this is, this is their thought. They just got me going on this topic. But those tracks are closing as the dominant tracks that are owned by NASCAR or on the NASCAR circuit, the big tracks that hold... 50 or 100,000 people are the tracks that are surviving as these little tracks that have always been the essential element and part of racing in America. And I don't know where it is in, in other countries. I'm just giving you an example here. Well, my concern and what I've been talking about, if you've been following the show, is eSport and who's going to control it tomorrow. Well, we've been doing this for 10, 20, 25 years, us gamers, us sim racers. This is our world. We are the grassroots level of this motorsport. But tomorrow, it could be controlled by groups so much larger who just come in 20 years after the fact with a big giant checkbook, write a check, take over the market, and then change everything for us, the core group. And I think about real life racing and I look at this article and I think that's exactly what it is, man. It, NASCAR wouldn't be there if it weren't for the guys who show up on Friday nights at Irwindale. I mean, it's a really easy statement to make. I'm not wrong here. NASCAR would not exist if it weren't for small-time racing. And small-time racing is now being squashed and disappearing, and the big money power still exists. And I'm not pointing any fingers at who's right or wrong. I'm just saying this is the way it plays out. This is why I'm concerned for the future of eSport, even though I'm optimistic for the future of eSport. Um... Uh, what's not a fair comparison? And, and I use Irwindale as my local example, but I'm sure wherever you live, you know a track that you've loved that is no longer there. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is very common. This is happening all over. So anyway, this article is just a good way of kind of getting your brain thinking about what might happen in the future to even what we do as sim racing. How will motorsports involvement in sim racing affect or change what we do? And will eSport be so separated from what we do that it won't matter? I don't know. Is it another rant? I don't know if it's as much a rant as much as just thoughts for concern. I mean, I think the great thing about the pit stop is bringing, being able to f not just sit here and think about it myself or not just get on the phone with John Hill and, and talk about this stuff, but being able to, to have you guys uh, think about it. And, and, and at some point, maybe something is so important that we collectively have to let our voice be heard so i don't know if it's a rant i mean i am okay with it being a rant though i i don't mind with we could we could add a, a a section to the pit stop for sean's rant of the day uh i always got something to rant about uh, another article at medium.com and it's giving a layout for their thoughts on an esport racing league template and i'm a little long already so i'm not going to go into this but I didn't know about this this site until it was sent in by one of you guys. And this is actually written by Parker Kligerman. So we're talking about the real deal, giving his thoughts and opinions on the layout of the land, on how it would play out, how it would be structured, all of it. I mean, it's, it's a really well thought out. I read about three quarters of the article in preparation of this show. And it was, it was a good read. So check out medium.com. I'd never been there prior today and... Uh, what do you know? Two stories worthy of talking about for even us sim racers. Uh, last thing I'm going to talk about, and this is the end of the news portion of the show, 
And at CES, NVIDIA actually brought their electric cars. These are the autonomous electric cars. I don't know if any of you last year saw the race of the stripped down. They look like stripped down Daytona prototypes that they used to race. And in and at moments it was good, and I believe it ended in tragedy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no death, though, because we're talking autonomous vehicles. But this is a concept of what the latest from NVIDIA looks like. And there's a lot of resemblance to a Formula E car if you remove the driver or any need for him to be there. And I kind of wonder, it just kind of shows you with or without a driver how much cars have been optimized. Because here, you really could do anything you needed or wanted to do. And there's very little change in the overall platform compared to what... I mean, it would be very easy to then put a driver back into this car, really. So, um... Yeah, Irwindale is really going to be... A hard miss for me and I didn't go there last year so I feel partially responsible not that my one person attendance would have changed that but to me it's a real shame uh Saga Speedway I remember when that closed 20 years ago actually it was 15 years ago <coughs> and you know that was really it, it's a tragedy you know to me when you go to a small track and I don't even think of Irwindale is really a small track it's like a big track and a small body um it's like the pit bull of racetracks. Um, and I think a small tracks is being like really small and, and often chunky or even dirt. And I mean, you, you get down on the fence, you walk through the paddock, there's no pit pass. You just go wherever you want to go at a small track. And, you know, the guy you race with might be the guy who lives at the end of your block. Uh, it, to me, it's just, there's something a little different about that small time racing that I think is awesome. Spatial, you know what? It doesn't do a lot for me either. Um, what if it was remote control? Would ro remote control cars be more spectacular if they are full-size cars pulling the same Gs and mass uh, as real cars? So when they crash, there's something awesome. Uh, one thing about RC racing that always struck me funny is the cars are so light that even at their velocity, they don't have enough mass to do massive damage, and those Lexan bodies can pretty much take a huge hit. Tell you what, you put that thing in the wall, you're going to have parts all over the place. So it'll still have a certain amount of uh, 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 a certain amount of, of excitement involved with it. So that is going to take it to the end of today's news. Just really quickly catch you up on other things going on. Tonight we will have our McLaren race. So this is, whoops, whoops. Tonight, we'll have our McLaren F1 GTR race at 6 o'clock. Last night, I had a really lackluster performance. I'd like to get more speed. I think I'm a good half second, maybe a full second quicker. Had a little trouble adjusting from spending, like, literally hours and hours and hours of racing, I racing, and switching to Assetto Corsa. And it, it made... It, I spent a 30 minutes just trying to get comfortable. Um... Yeah, if the drivers were in motion simulators wearing, like, the VR goggles, that would be uh, a great... That could be cool. That would be very futuristic. Greg, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I love my RC. It is a really good rig. Um, a few problems with it that I addressed in my review, but it's a great... One of the best sim rigs I've ever sat in. Um, so, anyway, tonight at 6 o'clock is that race. Please come out and check that out with us. Uh, beyond that, I'll bring up the map. If you don't see your region represented, please send me an email at sean at thesimpit.com and I'll add you to the map. Just kind of keep track of where the entire world is in terms of our sim racing world, just to give you an idea of where everybody is. Uh, Bertus asks, what did I learn from Atsy and his DeRose, DeRose method? That is a great question. Um, the number one thing that I learned was at certain moments you can go back to your happy place. What do I mean by that? At certain moments when I'm finding myself overcome by the racing moment, at some moment when I've made a mistake and I haven't brought myself back down to the heart rate and concentration level that I need, those are often the moments that certain thoughts and things and, and breathing routines that I've gone through with Fabio 
come back into my my mind and I'd say that's the biggest pickup now I don't do the breathing exercises like I should I don't follow the regimen like I should because honestly there was something about that whole method the rose method where it, it the mental and the physical and bringing it together and it wasn't about fitness it was about bringing your mind and body together um and it was really powerful and 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 it's kind of weird how you can't put a finger on exactly what it does for you because it's always there it's to an extent i mean and i've never done yoga or meditation but there's aspects of both of those involved in breathing and visualization and just combining so many different techniques that you could almost say it's a, a religious type experience and so even though i'm not practicing it on a daily basis even though i talk to fabio nearly daily uh certain key aspects of it are always coming back to me and it's usually when i need to bring it back together when i need to control my world when i need to refocus and 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 get over something very quickly and it happens on track more often than in real life but it honestly happens to me in real life as well so that's pretty much going to do it if you haven't joined or checked out our patreon program please do there's a link to it in the description of the show uh there are some nice perks we all hang out on discord and talk we're going to be doing a big race where I'll be broadcasting the race for all of you. You guys race and I'll do the commentary. That's going to be coming up very soon for our Patreon members. Uh, the whole program has been additions, more behind the scenes aspects of the pit stop and the sim pit and more direct access to the show. It doesn't change the show at all, as you've seen, not changing our content or what goes out, but there are a lot of nice advantages you can join us there if you like the show you like what are doing please like what we're doing please subscribe to us on youtube higher numbers helps us get better placement better advertising continue to grow the tr show like this video if you haven't already check us out on facebook tell a friend do whatever you can to help us grow we're doing everything we can to bring you the best sim racing content we possibly can and we're going to keep pushing more and more into the future and a lot of it's going to come with your help and you guys the pit crew have already been a tremendous help so thank you very much last thing i'm going to mention before i get off the air and this is just way 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 in advance long beach is a local race in the indycar world for me i don't know how many of you live in southern california i don't know how many of you live within a stone's throw of long beach but i am planning on going to the race john hill is going to go to the race i might have a few other friends who are coming with me to the race but it would be nice to meet and shake hands and get to take a picture with a lot of you guys there at the race. So any of you who are going to Long Beach, get ready for, I'll probably announce a time and a spot where we can all meet. So if you're going to be there, we can all hang out, get in the grandstands, watch some of the race, maybe go get a bite to eat after. I haven't figured out the details, but John Hill and I were talking about it today. And that's going to be coming up very, very soon. So again, it would be great to meet a lot of you guys in person and i'm already doing that on discord because we have video chat and things like that so i'm already getting to meet a lot of you people michael i actually wanted to just open up my doors but i live too far it's it's like almost two hours with any traffic to long beach from where i'm at so no you can't for the race but michael you can contact me and you need a place to stay in where i live uh, you're always welcome anybody independently is probably welcome so <laughs> Billy's going to start walking now. Yeah, it's a long haul from Sacramento. So anyway, that is going to do it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the pit crew. And again, making just talking, sim racing, computers, and tech so much fun each and every day. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of the Pit Stop. For now, this is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.